welcome. My name is Gerald Yurden. I'm Roshan. Oh, yeah. oh, no, go ahead, man. Yeah. I'm Gerald. I'm an advocate and engineer. This is Roshan, and he'll tell you who he is. Yeah, hey, I'm Roshan. I'm a product manager for uh, Packer and HP Packer. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, today we're going to be talking to you about self-service infrastructure, specifically from the lens of two core personas. And this has kind of been a common theme throughout the course of this conference. We have our app dev teams who need to consume infrastructure, and then we have these platform teams that produce that infrastructure with a variety of tools enabling self-service. So today we're going to be talking specifically about how you would do that with Terraform Cloud, HTTP Packer, and HTTP Waypoint. First, let's establish a baseline understanding of what self-service is. Self-service establishes a happy path for engineers to create the infrastructure they need when they need it without having to wait on other teams to do so. We need three core items to implement self-service. First, we need some sort of interface that application teams can go to in order to consume infrastructure. Now, this interface we execute would execute multiple mechanisms of creation in order to create and deliver the desired application infrastructure. Think things like Terraform, Packer Vault, Console, and all the other tools that you would use in this space. The last requirement is the only reason we really needed to build this interface in the first place, organizational guardrails. See, that's really so true, Rashawn, because as much as we may not like it, as engineers, we have to adhere to the organizational guardrails that our companies put in place and incorporate those things into our designs. This is the start of an internal development platform. So what really is an internal developer platform? First of all, huge shout out to this community, the internal developer platform community. They've been doing a lot of work around defining this. And this definition is really good. An IDP is built by a platform team to build golden paths and enable developer self-service. An IDP consists of many different technologies and tools glued together in a way that lowers cognitive load on developers while abstracting away underlying technologies. We focus on following best practices. Platform teams treat their platform as a product, which is key, uh, using user research and then continuously maintaining and improving this platform. Now, let's get to the fun part. Let's say a tech CEO wants to incorporate AI images as a feature in their products using Stable Diffusion. Now, in order to make this happen, let's say our CEO reached out to his R&D team. And by R&D team, I mean a voluntarily overworked engineer. Of course, he got something working. Of course. Now, he built this Stable Diffusion UI, and he's built an API on top of it that can be used to inject AI-generated images across the entire product portfolio. But now, we need to inject this success across the rest of the company products, comprised of many application teams. As a baseline, each team needs some GPU-enabled cloud infrastructure and access to the Stable Diffusion UI and API. Mm -hmm. After this heroic effort, the platform engineering team gets contacted and works together with this engineer, plus an early adopter application team with the goal of getting this exposed to the masses ASAP. Now, while this app team is building and testing, the platform team builds a way to expose this infrastructure to additional application teams. All right. And we're going to be doing that with HTTP Waypoint. We're also going to be leveraging Terraform no-code modules and HTTP Packer templates as core mechanisms of creation. A couple weeks pass, and we have something. Something that can scale beyond just one dev's machine to the masses, all enabled by HTTP Waypoint as the consumer interface. Let's take it for a spin. Let's take a look at the outcome of this work and the application team's experience consuming this infrastructure via self-service with HTTP Waypoint. G speaking. <laughs> hey, G. This is Dev. Oh, so you heard about the stable diffusion requirement. Yeah, actually, I just found out I was assigned to the project. I was told there's a decent amount of GPU-enabled infrastructure, and I'm just trying to figure out how I gain access to that. Yeah, yeah. So fortunately, we've been working on this the last couple okay, of weeks. Cool. We got a template you can execute to get the testing environment nice. in place. You should be able to see the Terraform running as well when you execute the template. I'm forwarding you the email now with the info. Awesome. Get set up. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking now. Thanks, G. No problem. Happy hunting. All right. The email said that I had to sign the HashiCorp Cloud Platform. 
So I should be able to do that with GitHub dashboard. And I said go to waypoint. I said dashboard waypoint. I said I should have one example project, which I do. And in order to get my diffusion infrastructure, it says create project, create project with template, and then use the stable diffusion template. Okay. Press next. I said insert my project name, diffusion project team A, and then just hit create. Oh, I can actually see this in Terraform. I see this in Terraform. Oh, nice. I'm logged in. Oh, the plan already finished. Okay. Nice, nice. Cost estimation. Sheesh. Glad I'm not paying for it. Huh, it worked. Oh, it even gives me a DNS name. Nice. I do remember the email saying that it can take a few minutes to spin up. Grab a cup of coffee real quick. Oh. All right, let's try and visit this DNS name. Hey, looks like it worked. Said so I hit the API by going to slash docs. Let's see. Nice. Very cool. All right. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, show me a dog on a beach. Oh, that's pretty quick. Yeah, that GPU is definitely kicking in. And look at that. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna be fun. It is profoundly weird watching yourself while other people watch you. <laughs> All right, as we saw in the demo, HTTP Waypoint is currently set to release application templates. Wait for the slides to catch up here a little bit. The future of HTTP Waypoint is exciting, and today we'll be introducing add-ons, and also upcoming golden workflows coming in the near future to further enable and standardize self-service for application teams. So that was great, but how? We had this nice experience as an app team, but what the heck is going on behind the scenes? Now this is where Terraform Cloud and HTTP Packer come in. Right. Let's take a look under the hood to see how this is actually put together. G speaking. Hey, have you heard about the new AI mandate? No, not really. What happened? So CEO wants stable diffusion incorporated into the next release. Requires a good amount of GPU-enabled okay. infrastructure, and devs need a place to test. We got something working, but we need a way to make it consumable by the app teams. Got you. All right, well, I mean, I can definitely get started on it. Great. I sent you an email with all the progress so far and what we got working. Use a little bit of Terraform to get stuff up and running. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Awesome. See ya. Yep, no problem. Bye. All right, so I need a way for my devs to consume. I know that HTTP Waypoint can serve as an interface for devs on the infrastructure I create. If I remember right, we have this create project with template. But that means I have to create this template. Okay. Well, I have a little bit of Terraform code to start. Let's go ahead and build out the Terraform. I need a properly configure an AMI. That way it just makes it really easy for them to come here and do this. All right, let's take a look at this Terraform code. Okay, okay, pretty simple. In order for my devs to utilize waypoint templates, I need to convert this into a Terraform no-code module. Before that though, mm, I wanna create a machine image so that I can configure system D, make sure all my app dependencies are in place. I need a way to version these images. So Terraform always pulls the latest version or one that is specified. This reduces the need for post provisioning steps as much. I think I'll utilize ACP Packer for that. They had this new channels feature that was really nice. All right, first let's incorporate this install script. Now let's add the system D config file to our image. Cool. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, just ran my Packer build again. And I can see my image ID here, which is cool in HTTP Packer. I got my AWS Stable Diffusion. I can see some good information about where my image is held, what iteration I'm on. 
which is really helpful with versioning and distributing these machine images in a way that enables self-service, so that's pretty cool. I can also click here with Use with Terraform and choose from different channels. Right now I'm on the latest channel, which is kind of the behavior I want right now. Every time someone provisions using this AMI, I'd like them to use the latest version. But I also have a dev channel here. I can specify cloud provider here, region, all that good stuff. And then at the bottom, I can copy this as a data source to use in my Terraform, which is actually what I plan on doing. If I want to see more information on iterations, I can click on that here, see information about that specific iteration, which is really cool. And it even lets me see right here the latest version of the channel. So let me go ahead and click on that. See some good stuff here. I can see the assignment history, all the iterations that I've done on this image. This really gives me a lot of power when trying to version my images and make them consumable by others. All right, let's go ahead and incorporate this in our Terraform, and then we'll convert that Terraform configuration into a no-code module. In order to actually create my no-code module, I need to separate it in its own Git repository with this specific naming convention. Now let's make sure I have my HTTP Packer configuration inside. At this point, I should just be able to commit my code and then tag it with a specific version. This is what enables us to actually deploy specific versions and make specific versions of our infrastructure available to development teams. Now let's go ahead and publish our no-code module. All right, I'm in Terraform Cloud and I wanna go ahead and publish my no-code module. Currently, I'm just looking at all my projects and workspaces. But if I click on registry, I can actually see all of my modules that I have. And if I check this, I'll actually be able to see my no code ready modules. But in order to publish the module, because there won't be anything right there because I haven't published it yet, I have to go and hit this publish button. And then I can say module. Now I can use my GitHub VCS integration to go ahead and get my module name. I have my Terraform Diffusion Infrastructure module here I'm going to select based on a specific tag. I can also do that based on a branch. Now you can also see here at the bottom this no code provisioning option. I want this so I'm going to go ahead and check that. And then it gives you the requirements that you need in order to make sure that your no code module is actually configured correctly. After that I'll just go ahead and hit publish module. Now after I publish my module I should be able to go back to my registry, hit no code ready module, I can see this module right here that was created, the diffusion module. So I click on that, and then I can go ahead and change my module here. And I can change this to the latest version, 0.0.8 in this case, as well as have some useful links like where is my diffusion infrastructure, all that good stuff. Now because this is a no code module, I can go ahead and hit provision workspace it will require whatever variables we have set. Here, I've established a public key. Now, because we're gonna be calling it through Waypoint, we won't usually have to fill out this variable because I have a variable set already configured to populate this public key, giving us the ability to log in as platform engineers to any node that's spun up in any workspace. But if I'm doing it through the Terraform UI, I would have to add something in here. I'm just gonna put a placeholder here because this isn't how we're gonna actually do this. Let's hit next. Now I can define the name of my workspace, which will also end up being defined by Waypoint. I can select what project this is under. I can give it a description, define if I want to allow auto apply or not, and then choose to create this workspace. In this case, we're not gonna do that because the very next step is creating our Waypoint template, which is gonna handle all of this stuff for us. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, now that we have our no code module configured, all we have to do is create our template. So I'm in HTTP Waypoint right now. I'm gonna go ahead and select the templates on the left and then create project template. In this template, we define our template name, anything we might wanna tag the template with, a full summary, including any developer instructions we may have since this is the place that our developers will be going to to actually consume our infrastructure. We can write that in Markdown here or copy over whatever readme that we want into this space. This is the piece that's critical. Choosing your Terraform Cloud no-code module. Now I've configured my integration so I can see my diffusion module right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. This is also the place where I can define what version is allowed to be provisioned through this module. It defaults to the latest, but I can choose any of the versions that I've specified. After that, we just hit create and then our template is created. 
and we can go ahead and create a project. Let's test it out. All right, so now that we have the template configured, we can go ahead and execute that template, make sure it works. We can go up here and press create project with template. At this point, we can choose our stable diffusion template that we just created. We'll go here and just create a new project name, call it diffusion demo two. Should be able to again, click this link to see the workspace. And in a second here, we should see if we're able to successfully provision these resources or not. The plan went well, cost estimation is queuing. If you had it set up to do any run tasks or anything like that, that would also run. And we're running our apply. Awesome. And now as a, as a dev, I should actually be able to see my outputs, which I'm given a DNS name here. And that'll lead me directly to the Stable Diffusion UI. All right. Hopefully this gives my devs a good experience. All right. So as we saw in the demo, Terraform Cloud features uh, self-service projects and no-code modules. You can also set policy as code with Sentinel in Terraform Cloud. And then for HTTP Packer, uh, HTTP Packer currently features version tracking, channels, and usage as a Terraform data source. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you.